Darktable allows you to work in two color spaces. One is display referred and the other one is scene referred. My name is Rico Richardson and in this video I'm going to take you through the differences and help you better understand these workflows. If we look at the display referred workflow and what it means, the word itself houses the concept display. It basically means that you're working in a color space which is based on your display. This can be a phone, a monitor, a tablet or any other device that has a display and can, you guessed it, display an image. The problem with this workflow for me is that it's impossible to know which device someone will use to view your image. Not to mention the fact that you can go more in depth with this by asking yourself questions like what is the brand? Because a Samsung by default has more saturated colors than a Sony. Or will the device be properly calibrated? Because this too makes a difference in how the output of the device will be. So the issue with the display refer workflow is that you basically have a raw image that can work within much bigger boundaries than the boundaries of the display it will be served on. You will work between 0 to 255 with 0 being the most black and 255 being the most black. If we look for the most simple definition, I found this explanation from Film Riot saying, a scene refer workflow is one in which we manipulate our images prior to their transformation from camera color space to display color space. A display refer workflow is one in which we manipulate our images after they've been transformed from camera color space to display color space. Using display referred workflow in Darktable also applies a simulation JPEG of your camera to start with. This is why I use scene referred, because I will have the highest possibilities when it comes to editing an image and using all of its raw data. Here's a video containing an example of the difference in exposure between a display referred and a scene referred workflow. Now keep in mind that eventually you will still end up with a display referred image, but it will be at the end of the pipeline when you export it. So when you edit in a display referred environment, you're basically editing an already rendered image. But with scene referred, you're editing before rendering by simulating the scene in the device of your choice. If we put this in an overview, this is how a scene referred color grading workflow looks like. You have your source footage, whether that's a photo or video, then go and color correct and color grade the image. And when that's done, we have an image transform from the camera color space to the display color space, which then ends up on the reference display. If we look at the same overview for display referred color grading workflow, we see that we have the source footage, which again can be a video or a photo, which then has an image transform in which the camera color space gets transformed to the display color space, which then is followed by color correcting or color grading before it is rendered to the reference display. Now, why would this be a problem? Well, for starters, you will get some weird numbers when you're editing, because within the linear workspace, one plus one stays two. But within the non-linear workspace, adjustments have already been applied before you start adjusting in the first place, so your outcome in numbers might make no sense. Because that's what your computer sees, an input of numbers that will render you an output. Another reason why working within the display refer workflow can be a problem is if you're using multiple devices. So let's say you're using a Sony A7C like I am, an Insta360 and a Canon G7X Mark II pocket camera, and you want all of those devices to look the same. If you use the display refer workflow, base curves will already have been applied to the image, basically making you start with a handicap. That's why scene referred is the better option when using multiple devices which you want to make look alike because you will then start with the raw footage of each and every one of them, provided that they allow you to capture raw. From there on, you can work on your image. It's one of the things you might not know, but when you shoot in raw, it doesn't matter which camera profile you use, because the basis is always the same, and the raw file will always be the image without the style pre-applied. Keep in mind though that this also means that working within the scene referred workspace is much more difficult than working on the display referred workspace. And that has to do with the fact that when you're using a scene referred workflow, you'll have to build up the image from the basics from the moment it arrives to your sensor till the moment you are watching it on your screen. I'll be sure to link the article of FilmRite in the description down below so you can read up some more about this topic. And there's a lot of information to digest, but it will help you better understand when working on your image. 
I'll also link a different website which has a very in-depth explanation of color spaces and what that means in display referred versus scene referred workflow of photography. Hopefully this has cleared up the differences between a display referred workflow and a scene referred workflow. My choice is the scene referred, but if you like to start with an image closer to a JPEG, then you might want to try out the display referred workflow. My name is Rico Richardson, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Doei!